All right, I will keep checking our waiting room. But again, I am uh, Tanya Hitchman, the Director of Community Programs at ALS Texas. So glad y'all are joining us. This is not our first uh, cooking demonstration and meal prep presentation that we've had with the amazing team at Two Taste. But every time we have them join us, join us, we love it. Um, not only are the recipes delicious, and I have tried them, uh, they're the tips they give us everybody can use, and there's special tips that families uh, on the ALS journey, whether you are living with ALS or helping to care for someone, that you'll get some texture modifications and some tips and tricks today as well. So. Thank you for joining us. The chefs are amazing. I'm going to turn it over to them and let them do what they do best. All right. Thank you, Tanya. And hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Chef V. I am a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and chef, and one of the co founders of Two Taste. And along with me today is Chef Lindsay in the other kitchen, hopefully see her too. And we are so excited to be here. We realize this is actually our fifth cooking demo with Yay. ALS Texas. Yay! Um, and we've enjoyed everyone and we're excited to see some new faces today. So we have, um, oh, let me tell you about our company first. So we are the co-founders together of Two Taste and we're a culinary nutrition consulting company. And we are on a mission to teach people how to cook confidently, simplify nutrition, and just overall feel better. And our goal here today is to help you as caregivers not only take care of your loved ones, but also yourselves. Because we know it's so hard all the time that it takes, and I'm sure a lot of times, you know, nutrition can easily go to the wayside, right? And we want to make sure you are taking care of yourself because when you eat better, you're going to feel better and you're going to have more energy. So we have some great fall inspired recipes for you today. We're making a four bean chili, um, some pumpkin pancakes and a sweet potato smoothie. And all of these recipes can not only be prepped in advance, like meal prep style, but they can also be made in bulk and they can be texture modified and calorie modified. So you only really have to cook one time and then you can alter the recipes because we wanna make sure you guys aren't intaking too many calories as the caregiver, right? Because we know your loved one requires more. So we have these recipes where you can alter that and change it, which is great and something that you should be on the lookout for when you're looking for your own recipes. So, um, we are going to start, like I said, with a four bean chili and um, throughout it, I'll talk about different nutrition needs that you guys need for yourself and your loved ones and then also how to modify it. So we do encourage you guys to work, definitely work with your doctor, your registered dietitian, your speech language pathologist to make sure that you know the appropriate calorie needs for both you, your loved one, and also the correct texture modifications, because that will vary, of course, depending on your ALS patient and where sort of they are at in their journey. Okay, well, are you guys ready for the first recipe? Yeah, okay, so this is one of our favorites. It is a four bean chili, and it's actually vegetarian, which some people are like, whoa, wait, did you say a vegetarian chili? But we promise you, it is super delicious and it features beans. So beans are one of the healthiest foods like we truly can eat. So they're a great plant-based source of protein and also very rich in fiber. So with this chili, you can buy any beans. So we call it a four bean chili, so we like to use four beans, but you can do your favorite, your favorite and your loved one's favorite and see what works for you. So I have some pinto beans today, garbanzo beans, kidney beans, and black beans. So it's also going to add a lot of color, which is, which is fun. And when you're purchasing beans, you do want to look for low sodium. So that's something that's very important, really for all of us to be watching. We don't want to be including too much sodium in our diet 
So low sodium is anything under 140 milligrams. So if the can doesn't say it on the front, you can always look to the nutrition facts label on the back. And on this one, I see it says 130 milligrams. So I know that's low sodium. Now these say organic. You do not have to purchase organic. That's just what was readily available at the store I went to. Um, so purchase what's within your budget. So these are gonna provide um, a lot of protein and fiber, like I was saying, which is great for you. And also something called phytonutrients, which help to fight um, disease and keep you healthy. And I see some chats coming through. So Chef Lindsay will be taking a look, and so will Tanya, of course, and we'll be monitoring that chat. So please ask questions throughout. We love that, and we love that interaction. Okay, so with our beans, you do wanna drain and rinse them. So I have a colander over here. I opened all those cans, dumped it in. I rinsed them off with water, and that's just to remove the bean brine. You don't always do that, but for this recipe, that's what we're gonna do. So some other things we always like to point out when we do any recipe, and this will make your life easier because it's gonna make you more efficient in the kitchen when you follow some of these principles. So one of them is called mise en place, and that means when you're cooking, you gather everything you need. So you'll notice I have all these like utensils, I have a pot in front of me, I have my knife and cutting board set, I have ingredients pre-measured, all of that makes everything go so much faster. The other thing we're gonna show you today are certain cooking skills. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few knife skills because when you master your knife, you're more efficient in the kitchen and things go faster. Because we know, we know that's one of the drawbacks for just everybody, right? Like anyone in society, they say cooking takes too long. But when we cook, you know, we get to control the ingredients and the food, and so it's so much better for all of us. But it can be time consuming, but when you master some of these skills, it goes a lot faster. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys was how to cut an onion. So I have my onion here. I've already cut off um, the stem end, and then I trimmed the root end. And I pre-did a little, because we have so many recipes, I know I have to move fairly quickly on this and pass it over to Chef Lindsay. So from here, I'm gonna cut my onion in half. And then at this point is when I actually remove the peel because it's so much easier. If you try to peel a whole onion, that takes a lot, that's a lot longer. So onions are massive these days, I feel like in the grocery store. So typically like a small onion can get you a cut, diced, um, but sometimes it's more. I've definitely used like half an onion to get one cut. Another alternative is to use frozen. Again, we know your time is so restricted. So if you wanted to use frozen onions for this recipe, that would work, it'll work just as good. Okay, so now I have my onion halves and I have a nice flat surface. I'm gonna sort of trace these lines, cut some vertical stripes down, kind of in a rainbow pattern and follow that. And I'm gonna cut through to the board, but not cut through the root end. So I'm space out my cuts just as thick as I want my dice. Keep going, okay, here we go. And then I'm gonna make cross cuts the other direction. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm getting a nice fine dice. And you know what, while I'm cutting this, I'm gonna go ahead and start preheating my pan. That's something a lot of um, home cooks forget to do. But just like you preheat an oven, you wanna preheat your pan. That helps prevent your food from sticking and is also really good for flavor development. So I'm just cutting around this little end that's left just to use all of it. Okay, let's see how much we have. So this was like honestly probably the smallest onion in the store and I bet it's going to fill this cup just with a half. Totally is. So I'm not even gonna bother cutting the other half. And again, like I said, you can buy frozen onion if that's easier. We just wanted to show you that skill to have on hand. A lot of stores now also, you can buy it like in the produce department, just like fresh um, diced onion. The only thing is know that like it'll go bad faster. So you have to use it pretty quickly. Okay, so I have my onion ready to go. And then I wanted to show you how to cut a bell pepper real fast because bell peppers, you can find frozen, but not as common. I know you can find in the produce section, but this is one you'll probably have to cut. So the annoying thing is all those tiny seeds in the middle, right? So to get around them, I'm gonna cut off the top. So where that stem end is. I'm gonna save this piece though, still good. Get rid of that. I have a nice flat surface now, and I can create panels. So I'm gonna go all around just like that. 
And do you see that? I have all those seeds in hand. And then I am going to trim off this bottom part because that's still good. So now I can take these seeds and I can get rid of them. Oh, I see another person joined us. So welcome. Oh, they're still connecting to audio. So I have these bell pepper panels now. I'm going to cut them into strips. I'm going to lay them flat on my board, cut them into some strips like that. I'm going to turn them the other direction and then I'm going to dice. Okay. And you could change this out um, with any color bell pepper you want. The green bell, pe bell peppers tend to have um, a little bit more of a bite. I don't want to call them spicy, but they have like more bites, the best word I can think of. Um, the red and yellow and orange are sweeter. So if that's something that maybe sounds more appetizing to your ALS patient, like maybe that might be the way to go um, to add some more sweetness to the chili. But otherwise, I, I tend to like the green bell pepper in this dish. So I'm just going to cut, keep going with these sticks and dices, cut all of it. And then once this is done, I'm going to throw it in this pot right here. And you know, one of the reasons why we love, this is actually our second chili recipe to demonstrate with you guys, but we love it because it's so easy. There's so many great additions you can add to it to add calories, like sour cream, Greek yogurt avocado, you can mix in queso, like all these just like wonderful, flavorful foods that really work. Okay, so again, these are still good. I'm just going to save them for something later just for the sake of time. So my pot is nice and hot now and I'm going to use some extra virgin olive oil. So this oil is the best for your hearts. It will, it helps to prevent heart disease and keeps you keeps your body healthy. So we really recommend you purchase extra virgin olive oil. Now, this is also great for your ALS patient if you need to add more calories. You can always drizzle extra virgin olive oil on top of any food where it makes sense, right, for the flavor. But like even this chili at the end, you could mix in more extra virgin olive oil if you wanted, and it's still going to be high calorie because it is fat, but it's it's good good heart healthy calories. Okay. So I'm going to add my oil to the pan, nice and hot. When it shimmers, I can go ahead and add my onion. And then I'm going to add my bell pepper and get that in there. So it's lame. It's one of my, my favorite sounds. We can I smell can it too, Shafi. Sorry? We can smell it too. You guys smell it? Uh-huh. It's delicious. <laughs> we talk about smell o vision right? That we need to have that uh, capability. Oh, we need it, yes. We do, we do. One day, one day we'll get to smell o vision Okay, so I'm going to let this kind of saute for a little bit. And while that's going, we are going to mince some garlic. So again, this is a skill I'm going to show you, but we know you guys are time crunch. So you can buy minced garlic and use that. We just like the flavor of the fresh. Um, so we want to show you the technique, how to do it. But if, if you don't have the time for it, like, don't worry about it. Go buy that pre, pre minced garlic and it's still going to be great. And garlic's actually really nutritious for us as well. It's not something you really think about, but it has a bunch of those phytonutrients I mentioned earlier that really help us to fight disease. Okay. So to remove the peel, I'm going to put my garlic on the board and I'm going to put my heel, my heel, heel in my hand on the heel of the blade. And I'm going to press down. It's not really the heel of my hand, palm of my hand. And when I do that, the peel is just gonna pop right off, just like that. So I'm gonna use three garlic cloves. This can change. We always like to say that recipes should be altered to your taste. So use them as formulas. So if there's anything that you don't like, or especially with the chili, if you're like, whoa, um, that's gonna be super spicy or too much spice for me, cut back on the spices. Um, you definitely can do that very easily. Okay. So I have three garlic garlic cloves right here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and sort of do some slices. Jesse, you have you have other garlic fans in the chat box. Oh, do I? <laughs> Guys, I think garlic makes everything taste better. Um, here's a few foods I say that with. I say the same thing with avocado, which that's why I'm like, put that in the chili. I mean both of you for your patient and for you. Put some avocado in the chili. Just maybe add some more, you know, for your loved one in there. Um, but yeah, garlic, so good. Okay, so now I'm going to go this other way and do fine chop. I actually say my hands always smell like garlic, like permanently. 
because I cook with it so much. And like, even I'm looking at this amount right now and I'm like, ooh, I could probably add more, but I won't. We're just gonna stick to this. Okay, so I'm just gonna roughly chop it. So notice I put my top of my hand on the blade and I was holding it like this. So kind of a different technique. It's actually like a chopping technique. It's really rough. And from there, I stir my peppers and onions are looking yummy. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna gather it back. I'm gonna use the top part of my knife to do that because if I use the blade and drag, then it's gonna dull my blade faster. So you don't wanna do that. Another thing we see a lot is that people put their knives in the dishwasher. Don't do that, that's gonna dull them. And then you get frustrated when you're cooking because everything takes longer than it should. So always hand wash them. Okay, now I'm gonna take my knife and put my hands really carefully, my fingers right here, and I'm gonna do like a dragging and pressing motion. And this is going to mince the garlic. So it's gonna look like that stuff that you do get in the jar. Okay, so let me show you like that. And I like to just kind of swoop it up and we have some minced garlic. So I'm actually gonna go ahead now and add this to the pan. I don't like to add it too early because garlic can mince, uh, mince, um, garlic can burn really easily. So if we saute our peppers and onions first, it tends to help with that. So I've added my garlic and I'm actually now gonna add my spices at this point because I want them to cook a little bit in that oil to help bring out the flavor. It really helps to do that. So I'm gonna add that. And then the last thing I'm gonna to add to this mixture is some chipotle peppers and adobo. I don't know if you guys have ever had these. They're so delicious. Like it, they smell like when I've passed them around in a room, people will say it smells kind of like barbecue, which is what I'll stand by. So the recipe calls for two to three. Um, you modify that, they vary in size in the can too, so be careful. Like I don't know, if, do you guys see this one? It's like this one is huge. And then this was the other one, like really tiny. So I'm actually gonna use this big one. So some of you might be like me and Chef Lindsay and be cooking for some children as well in your house um, or maybe grandchildren. So if that's the case, you also wanna think of, you think of so many people, right? The varying spice levels and what will work. So I'm gonna be careful because sometimes, it's just like a jalapeno, like sometimes these are really spicy and other times they're like not too bad. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm gonna get all that sauce because it's super yummy. Grab a paper towel here. I did wash my hands before I started cooking. Okay, so I got that, gave that a good stir. And now we're ready to add our beans. So I got those four bean types in there. I'm gonna add a 28 ounce can of either pureed tomatoes, or these are crushed. That's what was available to me. Central Market. I'm gonna need to grab my my spoon now. Okay, get that in. And then I am going to add my bulgur and three cups of water. So hold on one second, let me stir this in. I wanna show you all the bulgur before I add it in so you can see what it looks like. Let's get my water. Okay. Oh, the sizzling stopped. I really love the sound of sizzling when I cook. I find it kind of therapeutic. Okay. It's like, it's like white noise, right, Chef B? Like, yeah, it's like, and, oh, and then it just stopped. It just stopped. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me show you this bulgur. So bulgur is a whole grain, and it gives the texture um, sort of a kind of like meaty in the chili, not exactly, but the, you'll see, like when it's finished, I'll show you the finished product, and it almost looks like there's meat in it. And this is what it looks like. And so it cooks pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna add it though to this chili and we're gonna let it all simmer um, together. So it's gonna thicken, it's gonna help thicken the chili as well for about 20 minutes. So while Chef Lindsay is preparing her recipes, I will keep this cooking. Now the bulgur, we did test pureeing it and it's a little bit, it can be kind of a little bit grainy so be sure to blend it for a long time. And also, you know, like you said earlier, check with your speech language pathologist to make sure it is the right texture. What you could also do if it, if it ends up being too grainy, you could remove some of the chili before you add the bulgur and be able to puree it that way. Um, but once it's done, 
you can keep half for yourself or whatever portion you want. And then you can take out half and you can blend it using an immersion blender. I'll show you that if we have time at the end. And you could even freeze it. It freezes so well in separate com compartments and label, like label it with your name or your family and then the part that's for your loved one um, battling ALS. So you can have both of those and it can be ready to go in the freezer for you. If you needed to thin it out, you can always add um, broth is a great, great idea for this. Um, other recipes, remember when you're thinning foods, like gravy is great, juice, um, heavy cream, any of those types of foods can help. But I'm going to now pass it over, and how am I doing time? Yes, I'm gonna pass it over to Chef Lindsay so she can demonstrate some yummy pumpkin pancakes and sweet potato smoothie, and she will also talk about those texture modifications and calorie modifications with y'all. All right, Chef Lindsay. Thank you, Chef B. Yes, hello everyone, and those of you just joining us, we love that. So um, I am getting to do pumpkin pancakes today with you guys and also sweet potato smoothie, but we're gonna start with the pumpkin pancakes. And guys, this does not just have to be an autumn and fall recipe. This is delicious year round. We love purchasing pumpkin and adding it to all sorts of different foods, even chili sometimes. Um, it's delicious to add. So like I said, don't just think this is seasonal. You can have them anytime. So we are going to start by, I have two bowls out. One is for dry ingredients and one is for wet. And we call this the muffin method or a quick bread method. Instead of adding all of our ingredients to one bowl and then stirring it, we're gonna separate them and whisk them and then combine them. And this just makes for the best um, texture and make sure that all the ingredients are evenly distributed and you're not getting like bites of baking soda or something not as delicious like that. So I'm gonna start by using white whole wheat flour. You can also use whole wheat flour. It's just gonna make a little bit more dense of our product, or you could use half all purpose plus um, half whole wheat, because sometimes white whole wheat is hard to find at the stores, so know that you have options there. Okay, so I'm gonna fluff my flour just a little bit, make sure it's not too dense, and then I'm gonna spoon this flour into this measuring cup and make sure I have an even cup here. When you're baking, you do want it to be as precise as possible so that you know, the texture is correct. So here's my dry bowl. So I have my white flour. And then next I'm gonna do a tablespoon of brown sugar. The reason we like to make our pancakes from scratch and not from a box mix is because we know we're controlling the ingredients. So if you want more calories and um, addition of, of ingredients, you can do that by adding, like we said, um, more syrup, more sugar, more, more cream along the way. So this brown sugar is gonna be added with the flour. And then because it is a fall or autumn recipe, we're going to then add some pumpkin spice. If you do not have the pumpkin spice all mixed together in your pantry, that's okay. You can also just add cinnamon and it'll still be wonderful, or you can make your own pumpkin spice at home with ground ginger and cinnamon and clove and allspice and nutmeg. So a combination of those will also do the trick. But there is a teaspoon of um, pumpkin spice. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of baking, let's see, baking powder. Okay, so one teaspoon of baking powder, still going on my dry ingredient and then a half teaspoon of baking soda. Now at this time, I do wanna point out that we are all in a hurry and you're like, oh, that sounds quite ambitious to do all that in the morning and get this done. Um, I like my box mix, right? But you can mix all this prior to the morning or have this on hand so that you are ready to go. Um, and again, it just simplifies it, say the morning that you are making pancakes. So I'm whisking these dry ingredients together so that again, it's evenly dispersing that baking soda and powder and sugar and flour all together. So now I have my wet ingredient bowl. This is also fun um, if you do have grandkids or kids at home 
to tell them, okay, who's in charge of the wet and who's in charge of the dry today and that they can do it. And they often fight over the dry because it's way more fun to like fluff flour and make a mess. But okay, on to the wet ingredients. We have one cup of buttermilk. I am using kefir today. And you can also use a combination of like yogurt and milk and make this buttermilk texture, or you can use milk and a little bit of vinegar. So there's lots of combinations. So again, don't feel defeated if you don't have buttermilk at home, but having that acid in there really does help, um, help these pancakes just taste better and delicious. And also there is some food science in there that um, makes it a nice texture of a pancake as well. So I have the buttermilk and then um, half cup of pumpkin puree. Again, this is from a can. Look on the back, make sure you're not using the pumpkin pie um, in the can. It's just purely pumpkin, organic or not. Again, like Chef B said, that does not matter. Um, and then I have some butter here. It calls for two tablespoons of butter. It has been melted in the microwave. Don't blow it up. Make sure you are watching your butter carefully because it does explode in the microwave. But I have two tablespoons there. And I'm gonna set this aside because I'm gonna use this for my um, skillet here in just a minute that is warming. Like Chef B noted, this would be a good time to make sure you have your skillet on or turn it on now so that we have a nice warm skillet and it's evenly, the heat is evenly distributed so that you can make a bunch of pancakes at one time. Okay, so we have our butter and we're gonna do one egg, and then last is the vanilla. There's my egg. Give my hands a wash because we do have raw egg and we don't wanna continue with egg on our hands. And then a dash of vanilla. See here, it's a little bit of vanilla. Okay, now I have my wet ingredients. Together, I'm gonna to use my whisk again. If you don't have a whisk, you can use a fork. Sometimes my whisks are dirty and I pull out a fork and it does the job too. Okay, and look at this color, this beautiful color that we're turning here. I love seasonal recipes. And I'm gonna take my dry ingredients, add them to my wet, and then use a spatula to make sure I get all the ingredients off the bottom, mixing together. Do not over mix your quick bread or this, what we call the muffin mixture here because um, it, again, it's gonna provide you the best texture if you just can mix them until the ingredients are combined. Now remember that my skillet is heating and I wanna show you a test to make sure. Chef B, did you show the skillet test to see if it was warm? Okay. Even if we did repeat it, that would be a good thing. Okay, so I have my mixture here. Set aside, and I'm gonna pull my skillet over so that you can have a better view. There, how's that? Okay, so we wanna know if our skillet is hot enough. And often it's like, okay, yeah, it feels pretty good. But to really know, just get your fingertips wet and you can hear that sizzle, right? So just like Chef B, we heard the sizzle of our onions in the pan. We don't put onions necessarily with our pancakes, right? But we can do a little bit of a water test there and I hear that sizzle. Now know that I had a little extra butter in the bottom of my bowl and let nothing go to waste. I'm just gonna drizzle that with this um, pastry brush or you really can just drizzle it or you can use spray that you may already have in your pantry. And I do that to start. And then I have one of these ice cream scoops here or dishers or you can use any other spoon trying to make them as even as possible. And I have it on medium high heat. And it's really gonna depend on your skillet and your burner at home, 
the best temperature for your pancakes to cook. A couple minutes on each side, but don't be the one that has to check them, you know, like every 30 seconds or so. Give them a minute and make sure that they really get an even cook on both sides. My mom used to say the first batch of pancakes was always a waste because it never turned out well. But honestly, over the years, I think I found out that that's because her skillet wasn't hot enough. So make sure that your skillet is hot enough so that your first batch is successful and we don't have to lose them. Okay, so I have my spatula and now I'll be ready to flip those. But in the meantime, I do want to talk to you about, okay, so what does this look like for your loved one or patient with LOS, ALS? So two different things we can do with these pancakes. So you can enjoy them, first of all. Let's see. First of all, for yourself, you can enjoy them with, say, a cup of berries or some yogurt on the side and balance your breakfast. And then for your patient, we can look at blending them or soaking them with um, some of those high calorie, high fat ingredients like cream or syrup and butter and make them delicious. So here is one pancake that I have put into this bowl. And you can add, say, one to two pancakes. And then, um, so if you have two pancakes, then you can add a quarter cup of syrup. And you're also going to want to add, say, a quarter cup of cream. And again, this, you'll talk to your doctor or your speech pathologist and know exactly what texture you're looking for. But that will then soak into the pancake and you can just stir it up. And so you do not have to necessarily have a blender if that does work for your loved one. Um, if you put this in the refrigerator, those fats are going to harden. And so don't expect to pull it out and be able to just stir it and then enjoy it. It really does need to be warm syrup and warm butter or warm ingredients that you're adding to the pancake, again, because that fat will um, just solidify and you're not going to have the texture that you're really looking for. Okay, so that's one idea. You can have your pancakes and your cream and your butter and enjoy it that way by soaking the pancake. Or... I'm going to flip these for you. Perfect timing. <laughs> um, and then the next way I will show you is in the blender. So these pancakes, when I flip them over, you'll see a nice little golden brown on the top. Um, they don't need to be black. We don't need to make them too dark or burnt, um, but they will have a golden brown look to them. And that's how you'll know that that side was finished cooking. If they get a little sticky like that one did, just kind of pull them apart and continue to flip those. Okay, we're gonna do a couple minutes on this side while I prepare the pancake in the blender. So luckily I also made these for my kiddos this morning. So I have a few prepared here. I'm gonna take two pancakes and um, for this one, I have some good old ice cream. So this is actually homemade ice cream. Shh, don't tell. My, my family's actually made, they're going to really want to eat this later. So they're going to know that I got into it for this demo. <laughs> but so it has some really good fat and great calories that we're looking for and is really going to help the consistency as I blend this. So I have my two pancakes in here, like I said. And depending on your consistency will depend on how much ice cream or maybe heavy cream that you would add to this pancake. And I get my blender over. My blender is pretty powerful, but um, whatever blender you do have will be able to blend this uh, ice cream and these pancakes together. And again, we're looking at different consistencies depending on your loved one. Coming over here, I'm gonna check my pancake. Oh, yep, looks good. And I just want you to be able to see, can y'all see that nice golden brown there? Smell-o-vision, it's coming to you. You're gonna love it. It just means that you really do have to make them. Okay, turn that off for now. 
Okay, so just a reminder, we have our two pancakes in here with our ice cream and make sure you have a lid. Cover your ears or put me on mute. Here we go. Mm -hmm. It's surprisingly not loud on our end, like at all. It, it's real, so guys, it's really loud in her ear right now, <laughs> but I'm shocked how quiet it is for us. Oh, good, I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so again, it's gonna depend on your ice cream. This is a little thicker than I can pour there, so you could add some heavy cream now at this time, make it a little bit less, or like I said, a melted butter um or syrup would be delicious good calories <laughs> and then you can see as i gradually added some liquid i can now pour it let me go ahead and get a little bowl here you can see so here's the pancake and ice cream pouring into that bowl. Okay, so now we have a breakfast for you that we said could be added with some berries and some pancakes and even a scoop of ice cream. It's going to look something like this. And then you have your, um, your modified uh, pancake over here again, depending on your loved one. Okay, V, would you like me to continue or are you ready? Um, you're good, but I was gonna say scoop of yogurt for you. You said scoop of ice cream still. Oh, well, why not? Why not? If you, <laughs> Thank if you, you need it. <laughs> um, keep, keep going, I want the chili to simmer just a little bit longer. Okay, you got it. Okay, so while I have the blender out, I'm actually gonna give it a quick rinse, but yeah. Um, Yogurt would be delicious with yours, with those berries, like Steffi said, thank you. Maybe one day I'll have two blenders, but right now, quick friends. And this second recipe, well, one, one more little rinse. The second recipe, and maybe it's because I just love the autumn and fall flavors, but this also can be done year round. Um, so, so think about it as we go. And again, we can change some of the uh, flavor profile with the different spices that we add, but we'll stick to a traditional one for the season by this sweet potato smoothie. First, we are gonna do a one cup of milk. And we're gonna make this smoothie kind of like as a general smoothie that you as a caregiver would, would enjoy first. And then what we're gonna do is pour out half and then add um, more nutrients and calories and fat um, for your loved one. So first we're gonna start with one cup of milk. And this can be any type of milk, again, because we're gonna make half of it for you. So if you do want a milk without, not whole milk at this time, because we can add the cream or the ice cream later. So here's one cup. And then the sweet potatoes that we're adding, are already cooked, because you're probably thinking, oh yes, please don't make me blend up a raw sweet potato. How well would that work? So I have sweet potatoes that have already been cooked and then I put them in the refrigerator. And when I cooked them, I started the oven, I preheated to about 400 and I poked a few holes in the sweet potato just so that the steam could escape and popped them right in there. I didn't coat them with oil. I didn't coat them with salt. I didn't wrap them in foil. None of that extra preparation is necessary. So go ahead and just pop them in the oven. And then you know that they're done first when you pierce them with a fork and they're soft all the way through. 
And then you'll see that when they come out of the oven and they're cool, even before they're really cool, you can just peel the skin away, right? Like that. So it's very simple when they are fully cooked and cold to be able to peel the skin. Don't try to peel them when they're hot because first it's just not fun because it's super hot. And then when the steam really escapes, you will get burned. I've tried to, you know, push it and do it quickly and it was not worth it. So make sure you cook these in advance, say the day before, and then go ahead and cool them so that they're ready for your smoothie. Okay. So I have here, turn this guy, he's a little warm. So I have my sweet potatoes. This one is small. These came from Trader Joe's. I'm not sure where everyone is shopping, but depending on the size of sweet potato, you want about a six ounce sweet potato. So if you need to think about that in terms of weight, um, sometimes they're up to eight ounces, that will be okay. You might just add a little more liquid, but these two together, because they're so small, I cook two. Okay, so those have been cooled and I'm adding those. And next up is a large frozen banana. They do have frozen bananas that you can purchase. My ATB has frozen bananas that are sliced already in a bag um, at a pretty good price, or you can layer them on a sheet pan with parchment paper, freeze them, and then put them into bags or Tupperware. But it's really important not to freeze them all together or else they stick together. And then it's no fun trying to get them out and apart for that moment that you want to create your smoothie. So I've added my frozen banana and then I have pumpkin spice or cinnamon for our choices today. So since I use pumpkin spice in the pancakes, I'm going to go ahead and use cinnamon in this, but both are delicious. We're going to do a, let's see, this calls for a half teaspoon. Chef B knows me very well, and I could probably do a full teaspoon. Like, she is with garlic, I am with cinnamon. Okay, so I did a half teaspoon there, and then six to eight ice cubes. And you want this, when it's fresh, if you like that, um, the addition of like the uh, ice cubes being, oh, um, what am I trying to say? I don't know. There's a difference between when you drink it right when you add the ice cubes and blend it, but it will also hold in the refrigerator for a little while as well. And that ice keeps it really cold. Or if you're going somewhere, again, that ice is nice to keep it cold and blend it as well. Okay, so I'm going to get six to eight ice cubes. I didn't want to chance those on the counter too early or else you know it doesn't make quite the consistency. We'd have water. Okay, so I'm going to blend this all together. Awesome. Doesn't that look like a fun color? It doesn't turn brown. It's really this like beautiful orange. Again, perfect for this time of year. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour out half. And this would be for our caregivers. Oh, y'all, I can't wait to enjoy this too. Okay, and then for the other half we discussed, we wanted to increase those calories and that fat. So I'm going to go ahead and add some ice cream. Heavy cream, ice cream, either one. And I'm going to look for my lid so we don't have a mess. Has anyone ever done a smoothie where it ends up on the top on your ceiling? It's okay, you don't have to admit it. I have. Very fast. We're gonna pour this one in, but increases to meet the needs of your loved one. 
So we have a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter, but again, both delicious and nutritious for different needs. So these are the smoothies. You could even top yours just with a little bit of um, pumpkin spice or cinnamon on top and make it really festive. Okay, Chefie, back to you. Thank you. I'm a little jealous. I really want to drink one of those right now. <laughs> you know, and I was also thinking adding the ice cream. So you wouldn't want to do that all the time for yourself, but really that's like a really great healthy dessert because you're still getting the sweet potato and banana and everything in there. So something to also think about because you still, you still deserve treats as well. Okay, so this chili did get nice and thick. I added some apple cider vinegar um, about halfway through. I could have added that at the beginning, not the beginning, but when I'd added like the bulgur and everything, I just kind of like a little more kick. So I waited a little bit. But I want to show you guys how thick it got. So I'm going to pour some into this measuring cup because I'm going to blend it. We get two spoonfuls. Let me come close to the camera. So you can, it's so steamy though. Oh no, the steam. Okay, <laughs> can you guys see how it thickened? You see where that bulgur almost looks a little meaty? Pretty cool. I have fooled people, not like on purpose, but like I've made it and served it and like they didn't even realize there wasn't meat in it. So that's kind of fun. Now, if you wanted to add some ground beef, you definitely could. Um, it would be another way to even just add some calories. If you wanted to do half, keep it vegetarian, and you wanted to like saute some beef, or maybe you have some pre-cooked, you could pour it in there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna blend it. We thought it'd be good to show you um, this type of blender as well. So this is called an immersion blender. It can be a very good tool for you guys if you have to puree a lot, because the cool thing about it is you can put it directly in pots and containers like this. So you don't have to transfer, say like this hot chili to a blender, right? And pour it in there and kind of deal with those splashes. So I did in this case to split it into two, um, but that's always the option where you just stick it right in. Now, another option too, you could just blend the whole thing. You don't have to keep um, it as is for you as the caregiver. If you're okay with the texture all blended because it would still be delicious, you could do that. So up to you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I do not know how loud it'll be to you because Lindsay's, like we said, was shockingly quiet. It's gonna be loud in my ears though. Okay. Not bad. I think maybe. Not bad. maybe, I'm maybe it yelling at you guys. So this blender is not as strong as um, Chef Lindsay was using what's called a Vitamix. It's one of the strongest blenders. So I have to go a little bit longer. And remember, like I was talking about, the bulgur can be a little bit chunky. You also should check about the bean skins. If that's like speak with your speak, speech language pathologist to make sure that's okay. The longer you would simmer the chili too, that would help soften the ingredients. You could always cook it a little longer. Mine's pureeing pretty good. Let me see. And it really, it looks good like this. Like I, I would eat it like this myself. So again, up to you if you want to puree half of it or you want to puree the whole thing, you can do that. Okay, so let me show you guys what I have. And it's pretty, it's pretty thick, like a thick, I'll show you guys. It's almost pourable, it's kind of pourable. Let me bring it close to the camera. I will kind of scoop it. There we go. So that's the consistency. And of course we can thin or thicken it more if we need to. So I wanted to give you some ideas of what to add to it. So with our additions, we do want to, we want to include fat, like Chef Lindsay kept including, right? Because fat provides the most calories. So it would be delicious with some heavy whipping cream. That's been one of our go-tos today, huh? Cream cheese would be really yummy to add to it. Um, queso, if you have it. Yogurt, um, we like Greek yogurt because of the protein, but you can use any yogurt. Make sure for your ALS patient, you're using the full fat. You might consider buying maybe like this size container and giving two, or you can even buy like the single individual portions. And you can buy the non-fat or lower fat for yourself and then the whole milk version for your loved one. So that way it's easy to sort of go back and forth between those. Remember I mentioned before, we could just drizzle more extra virgin olive oil on top as well. Um, some people love the flavor, others aren't as sure. I'm one of those people who really likes it. And when I, I studied abroad in Italy and did culinary school there briefly, and we were, we were taught to drizzle it on everything. That's how you plated a meal. So if that sounds appetizing, you can definitely do that. 
And then one of our favorites, avocado. And remember, so avocado has healthy fats, just like extra virgin olive oil. So you as the caregiver, this is a great addition as well. And you can definitely add a little cheese to this for yourself too. You're just gonna to wanna to sort of pile on more for your loved one to make sure they're getting those increased calorie needs. So really the whole goal we're trying, or we are presenting to you today is to be able to sort of cook once but to be able to have it where you can have the nutrition needs be met for both you and your patient and to make it easier. So that way you don't feel as frantic or rushed in the kitchen and you guys can also enjoy a meal together and be eating the same thing, which I know can be very important to many people. So I think we, we did it, Chef Lindsay. We were really worried about the time. I don't know if y'all could tell me I was like, I was like rushing through my first part because I was nervous. <laughs> we we're going to get through it all, but we did it and we have time for any questions y'all might have. Anything. And feel free thanks, to say Thanks to you. Yes, these were so good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. My question uh, has to do with self care. Uh, I found this cooking demonstration very fascinating and interesting for my caregiver, which I greatly appreciate all the work that my wife does. I would be really interested with adaptive equipment, quick menus that a patient like me with ALS could prepare. I know that we're all in different stages, yeah. but I believe that there is a lot that we can do for ourselves and a demonstration of those quick and easy recipes would be helpful with adaptive equipment. That, that sounds like a great idea. So uh, for all of you that can still do some cooking, right? By yourselves and then how to modify as appropriately. I love that idea. Oh, that thank is, yeah, thank you so much for including that. Yes, thank you. Great idea. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? I see something in the chat coming through. Really helpful ideas. Great. Thank you, Betty. And like I said, these recipes are delicious. Um, every demonstration, I try at least one of the recipes and they're yummy. So we cannot thank y'all enough for giving us delicious recipes, healthy recipes, uh, the texture modifications, all the things that we need. And that's why we love you being a part of our ALS Texas community. Thank you. We love Thank being you a so part much. of it. Yeah. And y'all, uh, just a reminder, I've put it in the chat, but I know people have joined uh, throughout the presentation, throughout the demonstration. We did record today's demonstration. We'll send this link, uh, the recording link to everybody that registered regardless if you were able to actually attend today. So you can go back and watch this on demand as many times as you would like. And the recipes that were prepared today, you will receive those uh, as attachments in the email that's sent to you this week as well. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, chefs, Thank you. Lindsay and V. We appreciate you both. And I know we'll see you again soon. Wonderful group. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you. Y'all have a great day. All right. Goodbye, y'all. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye.